Uh, we have our brother and uh, I think probably our first interview of the year. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah? am I right? Yes, I believe so. The first interview, first of, interview the of the year. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, surprise. Sir. Look, I find it difficult to call it 2000. Me, I'm still dealing with issues. 2018. From, I'm still dealing with issues from 2017. So, with this new year, new me. Yeah, stuff this, today is December 35th. I, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Exactly. I'm still on some. I've never you. paid some bills from uh, last year. Uh, you know. now you know what and I'm I told saying. you I'm paying next year. I'm like, uh, wait, this December, wait, uh, uh, wait, January 1st, never. Is it January 1st? All this? these people that are calling themselves are new year, new refreshment. We, are, like, uh, we are still facing the same issues I'm from last year. I'm still paying some already. bills from December. Exactly. So, uh, see, 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 see. All right. Like so many of us, let's mm -hmm. not pretend. I want to welcome my brother, Mr. Shell Kuti, right here. Woo! Woo welcome! How you doing, bro? How was your Christmas? I'm good, I'm good. Christmas was nice, you know. You know, see, I'm not really a Christian. You're a so family man now, so. I didn't have to do much, but my family is traditionally Christian. Right. Most people forget that. So we still have a like a hundred year old tradition where everybody meets on Christmas Day for get down. Alright. You know, so okay. that was what was up on Christmas Day. I've been going for a hundred years now. Yeah, long, long time. Yeah. Before I was born, at okay. least, you know. So like so everyone, like the whole family, extended the, family. Yeah, if, you, just... if you've got kuti in your blood, mm -hmm. you are in there. <laughs> wow, wow. So you if know. we don't have kuti in our blood, we are not invited. No, we will invite friends too. It's uh, a big party. We can't, okay. you know. So what do you guys do? Just eat and drink. Yeah, eat, drink, catch then, up. You know. Uh, uh, yeah, all the kids run around. You mm -hmm. know, get to know your cousins. And, yeah. You know, catch up on updates. You know, because my family is highly professional. We hardly get to see each other all year round. So you just wait yeah. for yeah. And, People that are in the UK, that yeah. are in America, come home and we just get we see how everybody's doing. All right, nice you one. Know? So how's it for you now? I mean, as a, a father and everything, so you have to uh, be buying presents and whatnot. Yeah, and my, and my partner started working now, so it's kind of hectic, you know. Okay. You know, before I could just... What's your you know, daughter's name? Adara. Adara, okay. Yeah, you know, but... Uh, what does that mean? It means it will be well. Uh, okay. Like, uh, okay. I think that... Um, that's the literal meaning, mm -hmm. Adara. Mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. So what did you get for her? What did you get? What did you get? Her birthday is December fourteenth, and we are, you know, I don't have to get her anything for Christmas. Uh -oh. I don't have oh, 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 oh. Kilo day, kilo day. That one is too much. Nah. No, it's true. I, I'm, I'm not really getting her into the whole indoctrination mm. business. You know, mm. if she grows up and wants to do Christmas, it's fine. Her, her birthday is December fourteenth anyway. Mm. She gets a lot of gifts, so she's not missing out okay. on getting gifts in December. Okay. Her right. mom gave her some. Bicycle and uh, something oh, from Santa. That's mm. so nice. <laughs> you don't seem very happy. So I was like, <laughs> mom, uh, Daddy, mommy said Santa brought me this. I was like, yeah, yeah. We bought it. <laughs> <laughs> You're so mean. <laughs> <laughs> Which guy is Santa? Those work Left one well. white, white man from Norway. <laughs> Take credit. That's true. For my own hard work. I like that. Uh, I like that. We I bought like that. it. I like that. <laughs> With my sweat, I like, no white man brought you anything on his sleigh. <laughs> we don't even have chimneys here. <laughs> How did he enter? True. How did he enter? <laughs> All right, we and we eat reindeers in this part. You yeah. Can you pack your reindeer, come and see him. That's bush meat. Exactly. <laughs> All right, if you have any questions for Shell Kuti, <laughs> don't ask about Christmas. Any, anything but Christmas, ask him about anything else. <laughs> so, uh, how's the year been for you? 2017. Oh, well, the, the, this 2007, December 35th, you know, <laughs> it's just winding down uh, nicely. You know, I'm here with you. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, it's been great. It's been a great year. Got to spend like a couple of days with Carlos Santana in Las Vegas. Beautiful. I, I, you know, I arrived in Las Vegas one day after the Mandalay shootings. Right. Oh, wow. Are you serious? I'm telling you. Wow. Presidential wow. suite, $80. Are you I was bawling. <laughs> I wanted to stay in the Mandalay Hotel. Like it was almost free to stay in that one. Oh, yeah. It was like forty yeah. bucks. <laughs> but the place was dead empty. I was the only one in the whole. Why are like, you scared? You know, it's too airy. You know, like it's this huge hotel. There was nobody. Oh, yeah. You know. So I went next door. Eighty dollars, so double huh? the price. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like you know, let's plunge, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. we booked for so a normal happens, king room. The price you know, the normal king room was like yeah. was like sixteen dollars or something. $16. You know, they, you know, they reduced the price. Free food was going on. Free uh -uh. drinks. You know, that's how they get Las Vegas. We started or something like yeah. that. Like just forget it happened. Mm -hmm. Drink, gamble away. Mm -hmm. You know, get this. So I went to his. Oh man, it was a great weekend. So how did you get hooked up with Carlos Santana? 
Ah, well, that's a great story. I'm not trying to blow my own horn or anything. No, but you, I, we know you don't. So if you were any other artist now, we'll see you a picture with you, Carlos Santana. <laughs> I posted on one pic on my Instagram. You don't, you don't really in, the in the studio. Yeah. My bro, Carlos Santana. Hashtag <laughs> <laughs> my bro. Hashtag yeah, yeah. my bro, <laughs> Carlos <laughs> Chico. Exactly. I'm from Beat to the Wall. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are savage. How come you never do that? No, but I, I kind of do it, but I don't like make it everything that, you know, like, I'm not really about the hype. I want to do a lot of work. Yeah, you okay. Know. Uh, hype can only get you so far mm. as well because I only want, want to work with people that respect my art, not that people that just want to work with the trend. Okay. I, you know, I love that. You know, so with Carlos, he, he wrote his autobiography and wrote about me. Really? Yeah, spoke about me, my music, and even quoted some of my lyrics. So when I found out, I was like, wow, you know, if Carlos is, if I'm in Carlos's radar, mm -hmm. I need to, you know, tap into the anointing. Exactly. You know, so I got my, I got my crew in LA, we're called the WADP. Uh, you what know. does that stand for? <laughs> if it's not, if it's yeah. not clean, don't say. No, it's clean, but it's just the funniest concept ever. Is is my Oyibo friends. I mean, we are called the White Africa Decentralization Party. Okay. This is the WADP, okay. and we are politically incorrect. That's our motto. <laughs> yeah, politically incorrect. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, I but they are my, they are my, um, they are my people in LA, they are like my brothers, they were here for celebration. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, so I think yeah, I was one of them. You saw yeah, these yeah, three yeah. white boys following me everywhere, you know. The last two nights. Yeah, 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 yeah those yeah. are my boys, you know. Yeah. And we had the matching tees, you yeah, know. Yeah. I said WADP with the last yeah. picture. Yeah. yeah, so so I got them on it, they hooked me up with his management and that's how we took off, you know. So I got in touch with him. But, you know, the experience with someone like Carlos, that was the highlight of my 2017. We did a lot, we did like 60 shows last year. It wasn't an album year, right? You know, which was awesome. Like, wow, still so much work, you know. Okay, so now, um, you, you have played a lot of big venues, but you never get to, we never get to hear about it. Why, well, how come you go? I mean, Femi, I, I've also asked Femi the same question. I mean, you guys have played the Hollywood Bowl, Glastonbury, uh, uh what's the name? Um, all kinds of massive venues around the world, festivals all over the place in Europe and America. But you guys, you never brag about it. People don't know. Well, um, I I think it's not that it's not about because maybe we understand that music is not about ego, mm -hmm. you know. So we're doing it for the passion, not for people's endorsements or verifications, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the reason why maybe people feel we don't do as, as much as we need to do to mm -hmm. publicize these shows over here you know but i think we do enough you know like and it's also part of the narrative right now to spread the gospel of afrobeat right yeah and also my message is centered on socialism and pan-africanism it goes against the, the natural narrative of our society you know which is capitalism and neoliberalism right uh, you know to be precise you know so i just feel like you know the unseen hand don't want young people to be inspired by what we do you know they don't want you to think you can be completely resistant to the system and still have success who is the unseen hand the unseen hand are our elites okay. you know and they control everything from behind the scenes you know they it is their money that functions that makes the society function so they can pull the plug on anything at any time. You know, that's the power that they have. You know, and we have to understand that we have to work outside mm -hmm. what they control, which is difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, not a lot of avenues mm -hmm. that one can, you know. And especially in the Nigerian society, you have to understand people don't have money here. Mm -hmm. You know, we all don't want to be truthful to ourselves and address what we really go through mm -hmm. as motherland people living in, in this country. Mm -hmm. Minimum wage is 18,000. They tell you that it has increased from the 80s where it was 10,000. But in the 80s, it was dollar was one to one. I'm you. So mm -hmm. 10,000 naira was 10,000 value. Yeah. Mm. So people are making the equivalent of 3.6 million naira a month as minimum wage, mm. you know, which is actually, you know, basic. I mean, if you are middle class in Nigeria, you know, okay. I don't care about your salary. Mm. That's about what you spend in a month. Mm. You know, if you look at your going out, your foil, your mm. diesel, you know, 
and all your expenses that you have to pay, you know, in a, in a month, all the salaries you have to pay in your own household, you know, you know what I mean? You know, so people have been shortchanged. You know, middle class parents could easily send their children abroad in the 80s to go to school. Yeah. It's impossible exactly. now if you don't have a top management job. Yeah, exactly. Or you're you know, not stealing money from somebody. Exactly, you know, so I feel the pressure, you cannot sell things to Nigerian people and make money. It's impossible. People cannot afford it. We deceive ourselves like, oh, it is the people that fund our... No, but we all know that our best clients are the elite. As long as you have the elite as your clientele, mm -hmm. then you can be successful here. But why do you think that, I mean, the mass majority are just kind of... I don't want to sound like I'm downplaying it, but it kind of looks like on the surface that we are just taking it. Because as you said, how can uh, minimum wage be 18,000 naira, but people are going to work and they're just t taking it. Yeah, but um, the truth is that we blame the victims here. Okay. The, there's a success and failure narrative. You know, I feel people should act. I want people to get to the consciousness where they understand that we have to organize and energize. There's been the, the, on, on the ground for a while, I think we figured it was mentioned by the NLC, what, 56? Yeah, 56, yeah, 56, yeah. 56, which is still yeah. shortchanging. Yeah. That's yeah. still nothing. Yeah. Yeah. How you know? much do your trainers cost? 56,000? <laughs> what I'm actually even saying right now, looking at the picture, is the fact that a whole lot of states still can't even pay. I thought 18. No, let 18. me even see what I'm trying to yeah. say. Like, in terms of people not rising up here, you know, what are the institutions that are supposed to stand up for the poor. What are they saying? You know, let's let's reverse to the 60s and look at maybe the African Americans, mm -hmm. as they are called, or rather the motherland people in America. It was a priest. They were priests leading the movement. Martin Luther King was a reverend, mm -hmm. and Malcolm X was an imam, and they were using the scripture. Because there are parts of the scripture that speaks against oppression and subjugation. Yeah. Not the way our priest here cherry pick only the prosperity part of the gospel. Mm. Yeah. To blame the victim. So now these people that have the minds of the majority of the people, tell them you are poor because you are a sinner. Making it their fault. Mm, that's true. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. If you look in society, any big man that makes it, we all know they are extracting from society, but they say it's God. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> you want to argue with God's work, mm -hmm. it's God that made this happen. Mm -hmm. If God didn't sanction it. So basically, I feel religion is the foundation in Nigeria for our oppression. It is what it is based on, it's what is used to keep the people docile. I mean, it is, it is incredible that no priest in Nigeria can speak from the scripture, I mean, I wrote some down that I cannot quote from my mind, mm. but there are lots of scriptures, uh, lots of part of the scripture that is that was used by Martin Luther King, Nate Turner, lots of African revolutionaries who are Christians, very stout, mm. stout Christians. You know, people forget that my father comes from a Christian home. Right. The values of his activism was born out of his Christian upbringing. Okay, now taking that now to another level, I mean, oh, your father said that uh, music is the weapon of the masses. I think that was one of his... Uh, yeah, music is the weapon of the future. Of the, of the future. Um, you think that the the current crop of Nigerian musicians are not really uh, using that power that they have? To, yeah, but the truth, as I said, direct, you know, yeah. I mean, what are they going to do? Mm. If uh, Otedola is not a linear, he's not going to call you to his show. <laughs> Because right Shots. now, it's all about shayo, shayo, and Shots. bend down and get yeah, down. Yeah, and, and that ties down. into, you know, like, as I said, what do the elites, what have they given us with, for, with everything Nigeria has given them? Because all they have are things that they've taken. Mm -hmm. Signature signed in the name of the Nigerian people. Everybody cannot sell for it. So we're going to sign you some people in the name of everybody mm -hmm. so you can sell for it. People are billionaires. People are billionaires in different extractive mm -hmm. institutions here. Um, they have nothing to show in terms of inclusion and growth. The real duty of the elite, if you look at Yale, Harvard, mm. all these top universities in the West, it is the elites that carry most of the load. Yeah. They pump their money into the future, into legacy. Look at Rockefeller Center, all, mm. all these Rockefeller, this, that. They were the first oil gas of America. They were the barons, mm. you know. But when the, when, the, when the government was able to break up their monopoly, mm. they started realizing that they have to invest mm -hmm. in legacy. 
But here, nobody invests in legacy. They build hotels, clubs, they show you their yacht. So it's this luxury, this consumerism, that's all they have to show. So but they have to make it as the value, the end, you know, like money is the end. Money is not the means to an end. What's money what, is the end. What what what's the solution? What can we do? No, what are you saying? We what have I... to break out of the value system. We have to reorientate ourselves, mm. reorganize, you know, do away with the success and failure narrative, mm. you know, and concentrate on duty. As young people, as old people, as educated, not educated, working, not working people, we should have pride in being able to do our duty to community. To society, and understand, community, yeah. yeah, that that is all that is demanded of us, not to buy a Ferrari at the age of 22. <laughs> but right now, the, uh, nobody nobody's concerned about altruism. Everyone's, everyone's in a selfish, I want to get my... You too. What did, yeah, you, get me for, what did you get me for Christmas, Alisa? Altruism, altruism, altruism court. I don't even think altruism Christmas? truly exists. You know what altruism means? <laughs> I don't even think altruism <laughs> truly exists. You know, nobody does for anything Christmas? for anybody, for anything. Uh. You know? And doing something for your community is not doing it for everybody. You are doing it for yourself, for your kids, for, for the... That whole, don't, they don't tell it's us it's right? important here. Mm. They don't make you think that that is important. Over here, forget the group. Think about but, the but individual. The individual. As long as the individual, you know, you are... You are you, I mean, people go around, I mean, the most ignorant phrase in black community has to be, I'm a self-made man, you know. Mm -hmm. Black people go, I'm self-made, I'm self-made. Like, it's so ignorant to say that. No matter how hard you think you work as a doctor, somebody has to die for you as a black mm -hmm. person to practice medicine. Mm -hmm. it's, we are not invited to the table for anything as modern and people. Mm -hmm. Anywhere in, the, in this whole industrial revolution that exists, to work on the factory floor, to drive a bus, to go to school, was a result of deep struggle. Mm -hmm. So for you to be walking around thinking you did something, you had, no, you are just using this as an excuse not to give back to the community that has given the opportunity for, even when we go to America, Nigerians are the most guilty of black people for this. Mm -hmm. We disassociate ourselves from African-American struggle. Even if police shoot them, we are the ones that, why they follow police, they drag, mm -hmm. like as if resisting arrest is dead sentence. But then, uh, but then I've encountered African-Americans yeah, who, who have a superior complex and they look down on us Africans. Yeah, but that's the thing, that's the divide. I've encountered them, I have to put them straight. For us to you even be in America, you know what? I told them off. For us to even be in America to work in the first place as black people was as a result of their sacrifice. Mm -hmm. For you to arrive in America and enter the boss was as a result of thousands of African-Americans dying. Mm -hmm. You understand? America was not open to black people. We owe them the, uh, the respect for giving us the opportunity to come to that continent. They paid for it. We're not like Jews or Germans or Italians yeah. or the Irish that arrived in America and everything was open. Mm. You know? So, okay, even look at music. If you, Jamaican music is, uh, reggae music is Jamaican music, hip hop music is American music, and Afrobeat is Nigerian music. What's that? Mm. It's all motherland music. Black people make this music anywhere where they were. You know? It is our music, but we, they even, even to our arts, they divide us. Mm. Oh, Jamaican music is better than American music. What, what's, what's going on? Mm. It is our music. We own it as a people. If I'm inspired by hip hop, I'm making African music, whether you understand that or not. You understand what I'm saying? So now to now use this music that is ours to promote the business of Europeans that don't even want us to understand it in the first place. Oh, you go to the club, drink 50 champagne. Where do you think that money is going? Mm. You think it's going to the owner of the club? Mm. This is how they are using music to appropriate all our... We work hard, you work hard in Africa, under this our hot sun, sweat. You go and use the money to buy Gucci. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you now think you are, you are a fly. Mm -hmm. yeah, because you know, that's the narrative. Talk to us here about that. He's been giving Kanye West his money. And Kanye. No, don't, don't give Kanye West your money. <laughs> but how do I don't you, believe that. He's not in his head, he's saying no, he's saying it's fake news. But, <laughs> but the thing is... <laughs> How do we, like, obviously it's clear you're extremely mm. wise, but how do we push the youth to be as wise as you are? Because there's, no, a, there's, we, a, complete, there's a complete disconnect. No, because you show it. It takes sacrifice. One generation of people and influencers have to decide, okay, it is this generation that's going to fix things here. Okay. Let's be that light. Mm. You understand? So, why do they I make think us... you have to get rid of the whole generation of people. No, no not really. Because not really. Because because have people, now. people will understand because mm. I feel it because they've not really seen the, like, the, they've not seen the joy of it. Material, the materialism uh, and, and is so embedded now. It's hard. I understand that. It's hard. I, I understand that. But, but nothing good comes easy. We cannot say oh, because it's hard, yeah. we are not going to do it. This is what I'm saying. Have you taken the step? Have you, have, have you even taken one step before you give up? Have you tried? We don't try. We rather use our spare money 
to do all this superficial stuff, mm. you know, to be the big man of society. But we don't understand that. When we do that also, we are reinforcing negative stereotypes. Af motherland people are the only people that have to take their status everywhere. You know, anywhere you are going, you have to wear your best. Even in, see, this is Nigeria. Everything here is supposed to be black owned, black run, you know. But you see white boys who come to a restaurant, shorts, sleep, but nobody will stop them at the door. Here in Nigeria, they will enter, they will, you know, they are white people. I've told my white friends, if you want to know what white privilege is, forget your country. Come to Nigeria. Come to I'm Africa, anywhere in Africa. I'm telling you. Where we it's have terrible. to wear our best to enter. Mm, it's terrible. They will enter how they like. Yeah. Now, if you if you are not sitting down to think about that, it's terrible. think about the fact that Nigeria, as we make noise, today, is still 70% foreign owned. Mm -hmm. Everything we are fighting for and dragging is only 30% of our own country. Mm. Okay. So now instead of using our spare money to reinforce ourselves to be able to take what is ours, we have politics that is not advancing us just because there's patronage. Mm -hmm. We as young people have to decide now to start organizing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we know things are not the way it should be, but what do you want to do about it? Nothing. But yeah. everybody's very You've been scared. educated in the UK. They're not scared. But they are paid. No, because You've you... been educated in the UK. I mean, we... We, the cream of the generation, mm. betray the rest of the people. We want to lord over them. We want to replace these people. That is what we want. We don't want Nigeria to change. We just want to replace these mm. people. And as Kwame Krumah said in the I class trouble, the yeah. as Kwame Krumah like, kind of elaborated in the class trouble, it is a different thing if you join the struggle just because you want to replace the oppressors mm. than if you join the struggle because you, you want to replace, change, the system, change, change the system. You know? yeah. So that's a different thing, and that's what we need to understand are we down mm -hmm. to change the system and create because when they say Shane, you don't see anything in your music you don't see anything good about africa i'm like listen <laughs> i live in lagos nigeria you know you are you are an american journalist or you are nigerian in america or uk you want me to say something good about so you can feel good about yourself mm -hmm. not engaging as you should engage like give yourself excuse but i won't give you that because you see as soon as there's one good thing in Nigeria that everybody can enjoy. Mm. One that everybody has access to. I will be the first person to start louding mm. this thing all over the world and encouraging people to tap into it. But there's nothing, there's no, the, no not a, everybody cannot tap into any education, any good education. Everybody cannot tap into good transportation. Good everybody cannot tap into good healthcare. Everybody cannot tap into good social welfare. Everybody don't have good security. I mean, if we had good security here, yeah, all these big men won't be moving around with Mapo. Mopo. True, mm. true. I've worked with billionaires in Europe and America. You know, none of them arrive with cops. Mm -hmm. You know, to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, unless unless like they're me. wanted. <laughs> I mean, even if you're wanted, the, the cops are the like in Nigeria. Where you're wanted is DSS that will be following you everywhere yeah, yeah, yeah. to protect you from police. Yeah, that's true. No, listen. One arm of our security agents will be following the wanted person to, to prevent another arm from well, arresting you. Okay. It's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. All right, so... Um, <laughs> Why me? I don't even have a number to call police. Yeah. Listen. Isn't it? Wait, wait, do what's that number again? You have it now. Something. Who will pick? Well, yeah, Who will pick? No, they pick actually. Uh, no, no, they, they don't pick on the mainland. That's rapid, rapid response. They don't yeah, pick on the mainland. And when they pick on the mainland, my friend told me they said they were coming. They came like three hours after the whole thing had gone down. <laughs> Listen, I'm not gonna get involved. But do you? This but you, yeah. but do you? But do you think we are close? Do you see a big change happening in our generation? No, this is we we, we continue to accept development of elites as the development of everybody. As everybody, true. Mm. The only thing I see developing is the elite's ability to extract. And they different. create their avenue. Okay, they want to extract more land. They build a co-Atlantic city. What is the Co-Atlantic City, a 10 trillion naira project pouring 10 trillion naira in the sea when the whole of the mainland is falling apart? Is that in the sea? Mm. How dead? <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> wow. How is that development? Oh, no, but, um, um, you know, over time, what I've come to understand oh. and how I've been able to... They give us internet so they can email and do internet banking and launder our money with ease. <laughs> what I've come to understand, what I've come to oh, understand is we are very class conscious as Nigerians. No, so, we are not. No, no, no. No, we are. We are. When I say class conscious, the fact that uh, like the elite that has the money, you know, constantly wants to show that okay, yes, I have the money. Because when I was driving around and I noticed that you know the big chains of supermarkets are actually owned by foreigners, people that come from abroad. They and, say, yeah, no, no, they are actually because mm, 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 mm. when you look at please, well, let's let's manage. Okay. Listen, <laughs> let me tell you, nothing in Nigeria can be owned by any foreigner in 
these our own ladies, they are too sharp. Mm, it's true. Yeah. They don't have to put their name, but you do your business. They will come, so come, come. The last you said. That land you are using to ah, that should be more. Ah, ah, ah. The license for that should be more. Ah, ah, ah. Why they do like this? The many you, avenues. you just want to come from your country. <laughs> you know, but they will put the face of the you know, you there, you know. Yeah. That's why, you know, officially Nigeria is 70% foreign owned, but we know that yeah. you know our people are behind the scenes, they are also benefiting. That's why all of us cannot get the benefit of our country. Yeah. You know. For me, you know, Nigerians are not class conscious. The rich anywhere in the world, the elites are class conscious. Before you know it, they don't form association. Eh, association, eh, association. Mm -hmm. Always organizing, always in, always meeting. Their children marry themselves. They uh, link up. Yeah, you know. No, I've not seen any politic rich family in Nigeria marry from poor home. Uh, Still, is either this person family marry this person family? Forty private jets arrived there. <laughs> you don't want to show. And we go. Stop it. They're supposed to go oh, and protest outside and block anybody from arriving at that wedding. We we'll start posting it on. Oh Instagram, God, do this exactly. for me. Look hashtag. At this. Hashtag. Oh my. <laughs> I mean, I'm All next. Right. I'm next. <laughs> All right. That's so, the hashtag they'll do. I'm yeah, next. We are not I'm class. Next. We the people. We are not class conscious. Mm. I like that. I like that. All right. Yeah, what's the plan for when when you finally enter the new year? Uh, when when your 2017 ends? Yes, uh, I'm looking that uh, after for December 40th. <laughs> <laughs> when the new year starts. Me too. Starts, me too. Me too. I'm still. I'm with you. I'm with you. When the new year starts, All right. you know, on the first of January after December 40th. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm looking, you know, it's, it's working here. My album is out on March 2nd. Okay. We have a the lot of... The real March 2nd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The real March 2nd, March not 2nd, my March. 2018, yeah. Yeah, 2018. Uh, what label is that? The Nation Factory? No, no, no. I, I left the Nation Factory. I left Sony. Okay. Just leaving oh, everywhere. Yeah. Wow. yeah, because, you know, I think I'm too hot to handle this. Oh, shit! <laughs> so now I'm... Bad day. Bad day. Now, I, I'm kind of indie, you know, but I have good distribution with K7 Worldwide, which okay. is a big uh, record label. Right. Um, and I'm releasing in the UK through the affiliate Trot. In America, it's going to be K7. The rest of Europe is going to be K7. I think I have a different one for France. You know, so I'm just I own my masters. I'm distributing through them, licensing, uh, and it's awesome. Uh, that's the first step, getting the album out. I'm shooting my video next week in London, mm -hmm. January 1st for me. I'm going to London. Okay. After the 48, London. So after, all your, after all your talking now, you should be in London. Eh, because you because now. only a you London director. Listen. listen. No. Let no. me finish. No. I told you. The more you want to be serious, I won't be reactionary. I'm reactionary for the motherland people are everywhere. Shoot your motherland people are everywhere. After all that, our society. After all that, talk yeah, but now. The, the video no Nigerian everywhere. director wants to shoot it for free. This black motherland brother. In America, is willing. In UK, is willing to do it for almost nothing. For the guy bring the guy down to Lagos. To spend the money. When you, think, you think? Have you seen me on any billboards lately? You know, I think, I think you, you think I'm, I'm just coming to something that you don't know about, okay. Lisa. No, you're still the same with me. You know, so you know, I'm trying to do my thing, world class standards, and we have to manage cost. Exactly. If I can get it cheaper at the level that I want from a, you know, brother, you know, that cares mm. to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 there are more. In fact, there are, there are white people involved in Pan African. More white people for me that. Are, Involved in Pan Africanist struggle and support in it, right. you know, than some brothers as we call them. Like my EP kid, I'm going to release soon with Carlos Santana for the right. promotion of the single. Was shot by my friend Bruce from LA. He came with me to Las Vegas for free. He's a Emmy Award winning director. Wow. And he came with his camera and he did it. You know, I didn't pay him a dime. He drove himself, yeah. you know. So, I mean, this is supporting me. Okay. You know, so if I can get it there. It doesn't change my message, you know. So What's the album going to be called? Black Times. Black Times. So this is a title track we're about to play now. Yeah, man. The title, nice one. With Carlos, With Carlos Santana. Santana right, right. Here. Congrats, man. And uh, what's the label called now? Strut. This is out on the Strut Records. Yeah, but your own indie label. Well, I, I, I didn't call my indie label anything, but yeah. my company is called Black House. Black House. Okay. okay. All right. Can All right. I just say yeah. sorry? You and Carlos Santana. Santana is one of my favorites. I don't even know artists like ever. And if you're in L, if you're in Las Vegas anytime, let me know. If I you're in, can you not fly her? I can't get to Las Vegas myself. Exactly, fly her now. You're in my, 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 you're in my,
Tell Captain T now okay. what's okay. going on. I'm okay. sure you're doing that at least every, I mean, every quarter. I mean, you guys are terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I remember we dropped him and he's been doing residency. Oh my god, you can see that palace for this one. Do you go there? We watch a great show front and center. Yes. Oh my gosh. Fly back. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we're gonna talk about. I can't this wait to even tell all the girls that I came in a private jet just to see the concert. Oh my god! I didn't know Santana was doing residency in Vegas. Yeah, I need yeah, to go. Yeah. That's amazing. Tell your husband too. Don't do like. Don't be acting like me. People that can't afford to travel. Right. You so, any, any, any last words? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, almost New Year, mm -hmm. so let's also be more about the group than the individual mm -hmm. and raise black consciousness in the motherland. I like that. Nice one. Sweet. Spanking you, produced by who? Who produced Black Times? Uh, me and Robert Glasper. Okay, you're working with Robert Glasper. Again, he, ah, he did the last wow, record he's too. A, he's a legend. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Black Times, Sean Kuti, and the legendary multi Grammy winning. This is a Grammy winner. This is a Grammy winner. Yeah, man. I, see, I saw a plaque in his house for 33 million records. So, Chub. wow. I'm like, 33 million records. Pass it. One, you know, just one record, one plaque. Pass it. Pass it. <laughs> <laughs>